Okay. Uh, so, Riemann sums and definite integrals. Uh, Riemann sums not so important. It's just going to kind of be a notation uh, comment about what Riemann did. This was a math guy, Riemann. Um, the, this definite integral is huge. Right. So let's talk about Riemann. Uh, we'll skip the object. Yeah. Blah blah blah. Yeah. All right. Right then. Bust out some. I don't remember what that was. Okay, so Riemann was a math guy, and Riemann asked a simple question. He's doing problems like you were doing yesterday, and calculating the delta x, and, and figuring out all these areas, adding up the rectangles and stuff, and he asked a simple question. Well, why do all the rectangles have to be the same width? Why can't I shrink or expand the rectangles to fit better under a curve? And so we saw that limitation in all the problems we've done, that if you've got a, a curve, if you stick with a really wide rectangle, then all of a sudden you've got this wasted space. And depending on the shape, his statement was, well, why can't I just change the shape of those rectangles? Right? And we talked a little bit about this yesterday. The sigma notation is a notation used to represent the sum of all those rectangles. F of C is the height of one of the rectangles. Delta X is the width of the rectangle. And then the summation says we're going to add, that up, add up all those rectangles from, in this case, I being the first rectangle up to N being the last rectangle. Okay, it doesn't mean we're starting at one every time. Well, the starting point of the, of the graph can be anywhere. It's just that first rectangle. That'll give us an approximation. How do we get an exact answer? What does that mean? Oh, that means I don't know. That was throwing your hands in the air like you just don't care? Yeah. <laughs> I was afraid he's going to start <laughs> cranking out a YMCA there. <laughs> but he would have been dressed as a, uh, a cowboy, uh, a biker, a cop, or a construction worker. Was that, like that right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Indian, Indian cop, construction worker, and biker. Yeah. Right? Are those a four? I think there's five. Are there five? How many village people are there? Do you guys even know who the village people are? Wait, is it the cop list? I got cop. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. I think there's four. It's but you might. But I don't know what the I don't know what the cop is. I don't know what the cop is. There's an army person. There's an army person. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, is there? We should watch it. I don't know. Really? I thought there was. Sailor, maybe? No way. A pirate. A pirate? That'd be awesome. He kept throwing an R, right? He'd spell it wrong? Yeah. <laughs> Funny. <laughs> okay, so there's an Indian, a cowboy, an uh, army guy. Oh, cowboy was the one. A biker and cowboy. Wait, wait, say again. Six. 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 No way. Yeah. All right, go again. Yeah, so Indian, cowboy, uh, the cop. cop. Got cop. Policeman. Policeman, right? I'll let you look at it. That's a pirate. Okay. I was I two, three, four, five. I was getting there. Oh, we missed. You're right. Army guy and a cowboy. We missed the army guy and the cowboy. I told you it was a pirate. How did we get on this? Oh, Greg started doing the YMCA. I said I don't know. So I don't know. We all know it was the YMCA. Okay, just own it. Yay! Hey, there's no way to pull down. Uh, where were we? Sigma notation adds up all the rectangles, and that gives us an approximation because there's a bunch of wasted space. And we get back to my question: How do I get my answer more accurate? So, what did we talk about yesterday? Get more rectangles, or make them thinner. Right. In other words, we want to take a limit of that. Okay. So, uh, we did. Yeah, I talked about that. Okay, great. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah. So that this is what Riemann said. Well, okay, great. That's an approximation, but I'm stuck with that delta x, and I have to use that delta x as I move along. The problem was, or the problem is for you, if we started doing problems where you changed the width of the rectangle, it could get a little more complicated because now one rectangle is two units wide, the other one is 0.5. And so Riemann came up with a nice way to do that. So here's an example of one thing that we might want to do by changing the size of the rectangle. Skinny rectangle, wider, all the way over there. So Riemann talked about this thing called a partition. And the partition is, uh, and also the norm, is the largest width of the rectangle. So think about it this way. I've got a bunch of rectangles. Let's say I've got five rectangles. And I'm going to take the width of those rectangles and shrink it down to zero. So delta x is going to go down to zero. 
If I've got a rectangle that's four units wide, three units wide, two units wide, and one unit wide, and I start to shrink them, if I just shrink the biggest rectangle, then that guarantees that all the other rectangles shrink down to zero also. Does that make sense? Okay, if I shrink them all at the same rate, as long as this, the largest one goes away to zero, then all of the other ones would have gone away to zero. Okay, so here's his notation. He used this uh, double absolute value bar delta to represent the norm, which again is the biggest rectangle, and then said, here's what he wants to do. That's not any different than what we talked about yesterday, except for one small thing. He changed the size of the rectangles. So what do you need to know out of this? You need to know who Riemann was, you need to know what a norm is, and you need to understand this notation. That instead of just making delta x go to zero, which would work for what we've done yesterday, when the width of the rectangles are all fixed, then Riemann introduced this idea of the norm and then just shrunk the norm to zero. Make sense? Yes or no? The norm is the width of the largest rectangle. So here, if I go back, uh, go back to here, the norm in this case looks like it would be the width of that green rectangle. Okay. okay. And so if you think about shrinking all four of those rectangles at the same time, by the time this is half as wide, the yellow will disappear, the blue will be pretty close to disappearing, and as this shrinks, when this goes down to zero, all the other skinnier ones would have already collapsed. Okay. Are we good with that? Again, that's just a concept thing. Now what are you working on, the C or the? Well, actually, I'm all the way at the A. Are you? Good. Yeah, I skipped Let's see your A. No, but um. Coward. <laughs> all right. Um, can you go back to that other side we read? The one before Next. this? Before this? No, or the one after, after it. The one after it. That was before. Yeah. That one? Yeah. The past one, that's before this. What exactly? Kind of like back in the future type yeah. idea. Yo. If the norm is the width, what'd you say? what's the partition then? Uh, the partition is just the interval that you see. Pretty much use partition and norm interchangeably. Okay. I like norm better. All right, we good? Again, that's just a conceptual thing. Because there's not a lot of calculations to do there. Now, it is possible that you could have a, a picture like, going uh, forward now, You could be given this problem. Well, it shouldn't be that big of a deal as long as you know how wide each of these rectangles are. Then it just becomes like the problems you've done the last two days, except you have to be given each one of those widths. And it's still just geometry calculating rectangles. Okay? All right. So let's talk about this idea of a definite interval. We're going to change the notation a little bit. Uh, let's see. Let's go here. We don't want that geometry. And uh, we'll work with blue today. Okay, so we have something like this. Uh, f of x dx. Nothing new there. Just taking an antiderivative of a function f of x. We got the dx in there. What does the dx do for us? It shows us what Good. Shows us what the variable is. And for the most part, that's not an issue because we're always going to work with x's. But later on, we'll start throwing t's in there and a couple other things. But we're good to go. We want to tie that into an area. And so we're going to start with some simple equations. Or so, not equations, I'm sorry. Some simple problems like the following. Let's take a semicircle. Wow, that's a pretty good semicircle. And I'm going to go from 0 to 4. And I want to find the area under that semicircle. We're just going to do some geometry. Right? You can all find the area of a semicircle, right? Sure. Only one person can find the area under a semicircle? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So Was that you that said sure? Yeah. You're going to become very popular because none of the rest of them can do it. So they're all going to come to you for help. So I'm not helping. Okay. So now we need some notation here. Uh, let's call this uh, G. <laughs> Let's take a breather for a second. How's your day? Hmm? How's your day? It's good. How are you? <laughs> yeah. So far, so good. It's Thursday. 
What do you want to call that function? G. Good call. So this is G of x. And we need a way to represent the area under that curve from 0 to 4. We could write that out, find the area under the curve of G of x from 0 to 4. But now we transition into something called a definite integral, where we're going to put some numbers on this bad boy. We're going to put a 0 down there and a 4 down there. So what does that mean? That means I want to take the integral from 0 to 4 of the function, i.e., find the area under the curve from 0 to 4 for that function g of x. And we'll call this a, because it's an area. I mean, it doesn't have to be a. I'm just throwing a in there because I know where we're going eventually. Are we good? Good. Solve that. I'm going to need a. I'm going to need an M or a C out of you. Yeah, um, I didn't see an M or a C. Uh, you never said when. Um, <laughs> Good point. So what are you going to graduation? You're going to walk across the stage like this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. That's a Y though. Are you having trouble with letters? Yeah. All right. So, um, would it just be pi squared? Well, kinda. It's a good start. Yeah, but it's Well, you help it. We don't know the function that gets that sometimes. Sure you do. It's a circle. How big is that? Oh, see, now you guys are thinking too much. You're thinking like calculus students. I don't want you to think like a calculus student. Think like a geometry student. Yeah, radius is two. Radius is two. Oh, so it's so area two pi. Area is two pi. The answer is in fact two pi. Where'd that come from? Pi r squared and oh, one half pi. Which is r a lie, right? Pi r round cake r square. Okay. <laughs> it's like one of my few math jokes. Okay. <laughs> 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 Oh, that's, like, that's like a joker name going off later. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, so the equation is 1 half pi r squared and the radius is 2 because the diameter is 4. Plug and chuck. Yes. Okay. So uh, in case you didn't hear her, the, ra the area of a circle is pi r squared. It's half of a circle, semicircle, so it's pi r squared over 2. The radius is 2 because that 4 is the diameter. Plug and chuck, 2 pi. So we don't need to know the value of the function. We just need to know the geometry. Are we ever going to have it where it's not you know, from one end of the circle to the other? It's like 0, 3. Oh, come on, man. It's a great question. What do you ask? He asked, are we ever going to have it where it's not going to go from one end of the circle to the other? Mm. Like, you ready? No. Uh, let's change a couple things. I think we get a new slide here. I think we can get a new slide. I think we can a new slide will pop right. Oh, okay. I'm not struggle today. I'm not struggle. Not bad for a Thursday, right? What'd you have for breakfast? I don't even. Why not? You should. Most important meal of the day. Get up earlier. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good joke. No. Okay. Okay. I'm ready now. <laughs> <laughs> You're ready? <laughs> Sorry, we're done. I, I, I gotta move on. Hey, more oh, geometry. Oh, 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 yeah. <laughs> okay, so let's uh, let's change things a little bit. Let's uh, take that semicircle and move it up. Wow. That was a good it changed too, as it was It was going along smooth and then it went all wonky on me. Yeah. We'll go to four. Can you redraw it? No. What am I, a performing circus chimp? Uh, yeah. 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 Yeah.
I just want to go on record as saying I hate all of you. I should have followed my dream to be a Walmart greeter. You can imagine how difficult it is for me to not just turn and flip all of you off. <laughs> okay, now you ask for it. All right. This is what I would like. Yeah, chew on that for a little while. <laughs> Smart Alex. <laughs> Let's see what I learned on the camera. Don't have to tell me four times. I get it after three. Wait, so are we still finding the area under it or just a semicircle? You tell me. I don't know. What am I asking you to find? Max, what am I asking you to find here? You look exceptionally bright today. <laughs> Did you eat breakfast today? I, I did eat breakfast. <laughs> what did you have? Um, I had cereal, but I forgot what it was. <laughs> I forgot what, yeah, I forgot what cereal it was. Are you, do you, you think healthy or? It was pretty healthy. So like maybe a Cheerios versus a like Cocoa raisin. Puffs? No, was it like special a, 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 oh yeah, that's what it, it was Raisin Bran. Yeah. Oh, raisin oh, Bran. Oh, that's what I had. <laughs> raisin Bran Crunch or traditional yeah, Raisin Bran? It was a traditional one. you got to switch to Crunch, right? Yeah, is it, yeah, yeah Raisin Bran, you got like 30 seconds before. Yeah, that's what is I it everything? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Did you eat like wet cardboard? Crunch? Is it? It's so much fun. Right? Do you eat Raisin Bran Crunch? Uh, is this three times two? <laughs> I'm ashamed, just, to, I'm ashamed to admit that I don't eat breakfast either. Ah, wow. Oh, what? <laughs> totally. But I'm also not 18 years old. It, it's too late for me. I'm on the back end. What did you say? I was hoping he'd say he was 17. I'm 17. No. You're 18, right? No, I'm 17. Okay. No. I was close. I gave him benefit of the doubt. He seems mature for his age. All right, so Max, back to you. What am I asking for here? The area. Good. Yeah. Keep going. I agree. Of oh, the semicircle? Nope. Or everything under the semicircle? Nope. The, I don't know. Can I? Raj, I'll oh, Everything from, I don't know. Wait. <laughs> okay. Zero to two. I'm sorry? It's everything under from zero to two. So I was going to say. What's it? Zero to two? Oh, zero to two. I think you might be correct, but I'm not 100% sure. Would you mind stepping up here? Quarter Raj? <laughs> Nobody's gonna bite you. I won't hit you. Come here. Very oh, debatable. Oh, he's he's got it. Could you shade in the region you're referring to, please, just to make sure we're all on the same page? I hope the pen works for you. I did not try to squeeze in. Oh, good. Yeah, it works for you. Rookie gets the pen to work. Oh, 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 oh. It's rough when they're critical, right? It hurts you. He's doing a great job. Oh, oh, <laughs> You got kind of the deflating balloon falling out of his head. <laughs> okay, beautiful. So we want the area under the curve from 0 to 2 of this function. And remember, the area under the curve goes from the function down to the x-axis. So what's changed here is I shifted the semicircle upward. Everybody good? Yeah. Bueno. Yeah. Bueno. Oh, gracias. Um, <laughs> how do we do that? Maggie. Um, so I divided it into two things. I made a box and then I made a quarter circle. Allow me to be the jerk geometry teacher for a second. It's not a box, it's a rectangle. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and a quarter circle. Beautiful. Yeah. Okay. And then since it's four, it's the same yeah, as the last one, as the, our last yeah, answer, which was 2pi, that's what you just divided by 2, so it's pi. Yeah. Yeah. Our last answer was 2pi, but it was the whole sum. Oh, gotcha, right, right. I thought you were going back to the full circle. No, no, but you no, wanted no, it. No. The answer from the last one, so pi. So it's pi. Okay. And then it's plus 6, because that's the area of the uh, rectangle. Box. 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 <laughs> Bueno. Are we good? Okay. Uh, what if I do this? I would erase, but I'm too lazy to walk to the other side of the board. Same thing. Same thing. Okay, no problem. 
Now, what's not going to be easy is if I change that to, let's say, 1 to 3. But we're not ready for that yet. No. <laughs> the stuff we're going to do initially is all going to be simple geometry things. Okay. Let me give you one more example, and then I'll cut you loose. This will be kind of fun. Uh, next slide. Uh, let's go in green this time because you can't see that. Yeah. What is that? There's a mark on every slide. That's the pen. That's the indication that I'm using the pen um, instead of the cursor. Yeah, it, never yeah, it, can't, it doesn't erase. That takes right. OCD to the next one. Can you oh, yeah. color it over in white? Please. No, because I don't no, have, have white. Oh. So just make a whole screen black. Can you, can you see that? Yeah. Yes. Patrick, yeah. you can't see that? I mean, it's fine. No, I can change. No, I can. It'll, work. It'll work. It'll work. I can change. Hold on. Hold on. I got keeping this in my bag of tricks. Oh, come on. That's not green now. No way. Oh, okay, oh, 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 What's that? Is, is that a circle? No, this was just a this is, Sorry. <laughs> I thought I, I was all seated. Yeah, yeah. Shiny bobble! <laughs> what am I asking for? Amanda, what do you got for us? You are correct. Good job. <laughs> I mean, wow. Could you explain that, please? Um, I just want the fun. We don't know. No, I, I know what. Okay, okay good. Because that's the. We don't want to just. <laughs> just take that and multiply. Zero to five would be the width, and then three is the height. And then that's. And then you know it's a rectangle. Wait, do we know it's a rectangle? Do you all know it's a rectangle? I just found that one. <laughs> we can pray to the math god that we can bless with a rectangle. Otherwise, we are screwed. <laughs> How do we know it's a rectangle, Amanda? Um, because we know from that notation earlier that 3 is the height, so it has to be straight up. You're thinking too much. Finding the area of under the function. So the function is three, so it's just a straight line. And we're going on the interval of zero to five, so that'd be the width. Yeah. Okay. What is the function? Oh. 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 Raj, get up there. Work for Raj. No. Yeah. Greg's not ready yet. <laughs> no, I'm ready this time. Okay. Uh, okay. Excuse me, I'm going to go back and do Oh, oh, man. Wow. So the batteries in the pen. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Don't take it personal. I'm trying not to get over to say hi to you because I'm holding the work now. But if I do, be ready. So 110% of it does. Yeah. 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 Even though it's in integral notation, we're not actually taking an integral, right? No. Not yet. Not yet. What was the question? Bad <laughs> Maybe if you press on your board. There we go. I don't like the colors. I get right out of ink. As we mentioned, the function 3 is a horizontal line running through 3. Now we want to take the area under the curve from 0 all the way out to 5. And as Amanda pointed out, we get a rectangle. Not much different than the one we did before, except we plopped a semicircle on top of it. Okay, so 
initially, all we're going to do is geometry stuff. I want you to be more comfortable with the notation than anything else. Okay. Now, where this breaks down is if we change this into something like uh, 0 to 2 of x squared dx. Okay. That's not going to go so well. Because we're going to get this weird little wedge-shaped thing. And how do you find the area of that? You do, but that comes later. It's not that bad, actually, but we'll worry about that later. Greg? When you just make it, uh, I know where, what, the, what the y coordinate is for x equals 2, make it a triangle and then subtract uh, the difference between the triangle and the area. That would be great if I had some clever way to find the area of that little wedgy thing. Just find the tangent. It should just make it a bigger rectangle. I feel like you did that. You found the area of wedgy things? <laughs> I feel like you did. Yeah. Honestly, I don't yeah. know. Yeah, I could be a lot. <laughs> what math were you with? Okay, so let's not, let's not worry about that. I don't want anybody to. You could just make a yeah. You could, yeah. yeah. Change the function to make it work well. <laughs> yeah, we could turn it into a triangle. I mean, if the, fa if the function gave us a triangle, like if we did uh, uh, y equals x, that would be nice. Nice one. Yeah. Exactly, it'll just straighten itself out. Yeah. Uh huh. <laughs> exactly, we hold the long enough. Yeah, okay. <clears throat> All right, let's talk about one other thing. One other thing that you'll need for tomorrow, which is explained in the lesson tomorrow, but just to make your life a little bit easier, is something called an area function. Sorry, area function. Thank you. Wow. <laughs> really? Uh... Okay, so just change a couple things, but bear with me. First of all, I got rid of the x's in the function. I did f of t dt. And I'm going from a to x. What does that mean? Well, it means I have some function. I don't care what it looks like. Let's go like that. That's f of t. And I have some value a. a doesn't change. a is a constant. So whether you're starting at 0, 1, 17, negative 4.2, it doesn't matter. a stays here. Okay. Now what changes is x. So you choose whatever x you want. And think of x like a wall. So we'll draw in this red wall at x. If I put x there, then I get this area. And I can slide x along the x-axis. I can move x over to here if I want. I'm going to get a bigger area. I can move it over further to the right. What if I move it to the left? Now things get a little crazy. But that's what the area function is. Okay? It generates an area by taking two <coughs> values. A is a fixed point, x is variable, and slides back and forth. That's really all you need to know about an area function. That it's generating an area based on a fixed point sliding left or right from that fixed point. We good? All right, so you got some geometry stuff going on. You got some notation stuff going on. And then uh, tomorrow, make sure you bring your calculator. There is one last thing I need to show you <coughs> is uh, let's go back to that example I gave you just now. We want to go from 0 to 2 of x squared dx. Get out your calculators. I'm going to do this along with you because I always forget to do it. Hit the math button. Scroll down to number nine. It says, it's not finint. I mean, you could call it finint if you'd like. It sounds weird. I usually refer to it as fn int, but if you want to do finint, that's fine. Hit enter. Now, one of two things happens. Either you have this, how many people have that? Raise your hand. Let's do this. How many people don't? Okay, good. Or if you don't, it just says 
Benint, and I think there's a parentheses there, right? Yeah. Okay. For those of you that have this, you're good to go. For those of you that don't have this, I can turn this into this. It just takes some time. But you can still do the work. It's just a different notation. For those of you that have this, I'll deal with you first. It's real simple. What goes here? Zero. What goes here? Two. What goes here? X squared. What goes here? X. X. Do it. Tell me what the answer is. 2.66. Uh -huh. This is AP Calculus. 667. Very good. For those of you that have this, you just have to remember the notation. Don't just separate it by a comma? You do the function first, comma, the letter X, literally the letter X, comma, A, comma, B. Now, what's A? A is the lower value. B is the upper value. So for this particular problem, you would do finint x squared comma x comma zero comma two. You get the same answer, okay? If you have uh, this old method, I, the reason you have the old method is because your calculator has the old operating system. I can upgrade that operating system for you and it makes your life a lot easier. There's nothing wrong with this, it's just you have to remember the notation. How many people have this again so I know how many people I have to correct? Okay, so uh, what we can do tomorrow, you usually, Sometimes a calculator can do it in like five minutes. Sometimes it'll take 15. So what I'll do is over the time, over the next couple of days, I'll, if you come in early, I'll just get your calculator going. When you're done, I'll move on to another one. Okay? So this is great. And in fact, this is so great that the AP board expects you to be able to do this. On the calculator portions of the AP test, they never want you to do that by hand. They're going to expect you to use this every single time. So get comfortable with this. Okay? Questions? Beautiful. Day, I believe we're on day 56. Yeah. Right? What time are we out of here? 40. 40? Uh, okay, let me stop the recording first.